Hi everyone, today I'm going to demonstrate how to use the Casio CG50 graphing calculator to do matrix operations and uh, solve a system of equations. So the question I'm considering, I have a system here of four unknowns uh, in four equations. I've already uh, written this as an augmented matrix. You note the coefficients uh, 4, minus 12, 2, 1 in the row here, the first row, and the constant 51 is in the augmented um, column over here on the right. A couple of little tricks. The second equation does not have a term involving z, so I use a zero in the place there. That's effectively zero times z. And be careful with things like this where the, uh, the, co the terms are written in a different order. So I've chosen to go alphabetically, w, x, y, z. This is why the negative 12 coefficient of w is in the start of the third row. So all of these have to be in the same order. So all of the coefficients for W are in column 1, all for X are in column 2, etc. Now, uh, in class we looked at how to do this on the pen and paper method, uh, slow, tedious and error prone. So on the calculator what do we do? We go to matrices and vectors and matrix A will do, we'll set the dimensions to 4 by 5, remember rows by columns, and now I get the fun job of entering all of these. So it's just in the usual way. We would enter. Uh, as we hit enter, it jumps across. Now at this point, I'll pause the video and pick up in a minute once this is done. Okay, so I've just finished entering the 155 down here at the bottom of the matrix. Now, uh, it doesn't really matter where we've got the uh, this, this little cell cursor, but while we're inside this view where we have the matrix on display we have access to these uh, these context specific operations here row operations is very important so this is a little bit like what we were doing on the whiteboard today in class if I want to perform an elementary row operation uh, the first thing I would want to do is try and get a value of one here in this place so there's no simple way to do this I mean, I, technically, I suppose what I could do is I could go row number one, subtract row number two. And if I look in the row operations, I don't have an option to subtract. I can swap rows, I can multiply a row by a constant, I can multiply by a row by a constant and then add that to another row, or I can just add two rows that are existing. So this is really the one I want, and that's the one I'll commonly go for. So I would want to multiply row 2 by negative 1 and then add that to existing row 1. So let's see what that looks like. The constant would be negative 1 times row 2 added to row 1 stored back in row 1. So the constant would be negative 1. Multiplying that by row 2, uh, adding that to row number 1 and storing back in row number 1. Now, in this way, we've managed to get the one here where we wanted it, in the first place of row number one. Then we were aiming to get zeros below. Well, how would I do that? I could go row number two, subtract three lots of row number one. So in the way this gets set out, I have to think of the constant multiplied by row one. So that's minus three times row one added to row two. Here we go negative 3 times row 1 added to row 2 and there that one's gone to 0. Now of course all the others in the row get the same operation which is what we need. This is much quicker than doing it in your head uh, and even so it's still going to be pretty tedious. I have to then get a 0 here and a 0 here then I'll have to get a 1 here followed by zeros below, a 1 here, zeros below and a 1 here. Uh, at that point I could solve for uh, Z directly and then back substitute or I could work my way back up with zeros here, here and here then a pair of zero here and here and then finally a zero here in which case I'd have reduced row echelon form. Now there is good news. If I exit out of this for a minute I've still got the matrix stored there in memory even though I did those operations to it it's an equivalent matrix to what I had entered so I can pop all the way back out to here. Now under the options menu 
there are more matrix operations. There's so many matrix operations, they don't all fit under one menu. And if I move across here to the right, I get this command, reduced row echelon form. And I need to tell this what, uh, which matrix to operate on. So I need to come back and press matrix and then alpha A because it was stored in. And this will complete the task for me. The same process that we were doing, and it does the whole, we did the first couple, and then it completed the rest, and here we have our result. So what would I write on my notepad? Well, that was given in the question. I would write the augmented matrix as it represented what was there, and I'd make note that I used the graphic calculator to uh, find the reduced row echelon form, and then all I really have to do here is write down the result that the calculator has given me. Uh, what about four there and negative one there? That's lovely. And then I suppose the next best thing would be just to state my final answers. Remember these represented prime numerals. W would equal two. X would equal negative three. Y would equal four. And Z would equal negative 1. That's a little bit on the teeny side. I don't know why that ended up being tiny. We can fix that. And that's, that's it. That's done.